Hey everybody, welcome to this video. In this video I will be going over simplifying trig expressions. This is the second part of the two-part video. And in the first one, we did uh, simplifying the basic ones. We learned the eight basic trig, ex uh, trig identities. So now we're gonna look at the other three strategies for simplifying trig expressions. We went over one in the last video. So here's the objective. Students, you should be able to simplify trigonometric expressions using the eight basic trig identities. And we're just going to advance and show you two, three, I'm sorry, three more strategies and give you some practice problems to work on that you can take a look at the WISC link later on and see if you got them right. Okay, let's go. Here's the second strategy. Remember that the first strategy was change things into sine and cosine. Now, I'm, I'm, normally that's <clears throat> that's my first line of attack when doing any of these is to change things to sine and cosine uh, because then I can do all this other stuff. So if I see a, si a secant or a cosecant or a, or a tangent or cotangent, I usually like to change that to sine and cosine uh, before trying to do anything else. But the second strategy is to factor or distribute. So if you see parentheses, it's likely you're going to want to make uh, you're going to want to use a distributive property. In this case, we can see that we have a cosine. Oops, sorry. We can see we have a cosine here and a cosine here. So we can we can factor the cosine out. So cosine x, and when I factor this, I'm going to have one. When I factor it here, I'm going to have sine squared. And we know from our Pythagorean identities that cosine one minus sine squared is cosine squared. That's the first basic Pythagorean identity. Now we're going to multiply these guys together, and we're going to get cosine cubed. So normally the goal is to get one trig expression, you know, an expression with one trig function in it. So that's what we're really trying to do. So there you go. That's the first example. Let's take a look at strategy number three. That is find a common denominator. Now, obviously, we look at this one and we don't see any need for a common denominator. But, you know, we're going to use strategy one first which I explained just a second ago that that's my first line of attack. So cotangent is cosine over sine. All right, then I'm going to put these two together here. So cosine and cosine is cosine squared and sine. So now we see we have a fraction here. We want to find a common denominator. So the common denominator here is going to be sine. So in order to get a common denominator, I'm going to need to multiply this one by sine of x, both the top <coughs> and the bottom. So that's going to give us, I'll put it over here on this side, sine squared over sine plus cosine squared over sine. Now that we have a common denominator, we can put them together under one fraction. So sine squared of x plus cosine square, squared of x over sine of x. Well, look at that. We got sine squared plus cosine squared. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. And 1 over sine x. We're not going to make this mistake again. 1 over sine is cosecant. Cosecant x. So there's our answer there. All right. So again, we want to find <clears throat> a common denominator here when we have a fraction. Okay, that is strategy three. Find a common denominator. Let, it, let us look at strategy number four. Splitting into two fractions. Now, these strategies will work for most problems, but you might use something else. So, so these are just four strategies you could use. Doesn't mean you're going to always use one of these four. So I would first split into two fractions. Now you can split into two fractions when you have, when you don't have any adding or subtracting in the denominator, and you do have adding and subtracting in the numerator. Um, if you have adding and subtracting in the denominator, you cannot split that. So you know something like this: if I have one plus cosine x over, actually let's let's do this different. Let's see if I had a uh, sine x over one plus sine x. 
I cannot say that that is sine x over 1 plus sine x over sine x. This is not appropriate. Well, that's not that's illegal algebra, okay? Illegal algebra. You can't do it. So just don't do that, all right? So let's only when there's a, a plus or minus in the numerator. So let's split this up, and we can split this up into secant over secant and cosine over secant. So we're going to have secant x over secant x minus cosine x over secant x. Then we will, well, look at this, secant, secant. Well, it's just 1. Cosine over secant. Well, let's, um, let's just take one more step here and do this as 1 over cosine. Now, we're doing cosine of x divided by 1 over cosine x. So you multiply by the reciprocal, and you should get 1 minus cosine squared x. Right? Okay, 1 minus cosine squared, we all know to be sine squared. And we're done. Okay, so some of these and the examples that I gave, you know, we have we have only a few steps we have to do. Some of them they get a little bit more complicated, a little bit more steps. Uh, but if you use one of these four strategies, and again, like I said, you're almost always going to change things into sine and cosine at some point. See, I did it here. Okay, so use these strategies. They should help. Try out these practice problems. I've got three of them. One each to practice each of these strategies and then the the solutions will be on the whisk link okay thank you for joining me and later